Welcome back. It's Fouch and friends, and uh, I'm Matt Fouch. Thank you so much for watching today. Today, we're chatting with the one, the only, <laughs> they moved. Uh, what's up, bud? It's good to see you, Matt. It's been a while. Yeah, I think the last time we did this on a video, I think it was actually during COVID or maybe yeah. right after you left the Booth Brothers, possibly. I think it was just actually, it was three months or four months after. Yeah. And uh, so that was over, well, it's been two and a half years yeah. since I've come off the road. So, yeah, so it's been two years since we chatted. Um, I think, I, I don't even know if I, I might have seen you out on the road somewhere, maybe once or twice, but you, I haven't seen you much at all. So, man, I, I know everybody wants to know what is up with Ronnie Booth in the last two and a half years. Well, it's, I appreciate, uh, no, it's great seeing you. I tell you what, I, do I miss the road itself? None. I, I don't miss the road. Do I miss the camaraderie and do I miss my peers? Yes, I do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, that's one of the, I'm grateful for social media because I can see what everybody's up to and whatnot. Uh, mostly uh, some, you know, I, I work from primarily from home. Uh, every once in a while, since I've been off the road in two and a half years, I've sung five times, two of the times with, with the guys, the Booth Brothers in Shipshawana. And then, well, they invited me over to Graceland, which is three hours from my home. So I actually got to sing at, uh, in the Performing Arts Center across from the mansion there and, uh, cool. and had a ball and, um, and got to bring Kim, my wife with me. And, uh, so I've sung four or five times since I've been off the road with the guys. And next year I'm doing about, I think I'm doing six next year. So I'm doing enough to keep my chops up. Yeah. Michael told me, he said, uh, before I left the booth, brothers, he said, bub, you need to get out there from time to time. Yeah. Because, you know, like I said, I missed the camaraderie. I miss my peers, but <laughs> the road, forget it. <laughs> I'm happy to be home. You know, I'm a home. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> well, well, what I love, what I love about it is, um, you know, you say you're doing five or six times. You have such a great voice, but that's going to keep it really nice and um, not use it, overuse it, you know. So, and every time you go out, five or six times a year, it's going to be fresh and ready to go, right? Yeah, you know what? And it's it is true because I didn't realize how vocally tired I was, you know, wow. until you get away from it for a little while, and then you start you start to sing again, and you think, oh my goodness, my voice is brighter. You know, mm. but that's just oh. part of it. I mean, 32 yeah. years on the road, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you mentioned you're going to do six next year. And we were talking earlier before we started recording this. One of those is going to be with Legacy 5 and Ship Shawana. So if yep. y'all want to hear Legacy 5 and Ronnie Booth in concert together, come to Ship Shawana in June. Of yeah, 24. June 4th. Awesome. Yep. So you guys June can come 4th. check that out. Um, I know I've heard a lot about uh, you've talked about the time you get to spend with Kim and seeing the kids a lot and the grandkids and all of that. And you were mentioned, mentioning that earlier as well. So give us a rundown, man. How many grandkids you got these days? What, what does a normal day or week in your life look like right now? Well, when I came off the road with the guys, we had five grandchildren. Now we have seven and, uh, a normal week is uh, we just got back two days ago from Huntsville, Alabama, watching our oldest grandson. He turned eight, Jackson turned eight, and we watched his uh, basketball game. So, uh, and his team won 33 to three. <laughs> and this little guy, I mean, he is a, he's a player and, uh, and baseball too. He just loves, he's very athletic. So, you know, Matt, uh, typically if I was on the road, I'd probably miss that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but sure. uh, there's a lot of that. Uh, Elsie Rose and Isla Jane, they're 20 miles up the road from me. So uh, I meet with them at least once a week, uh, if not more. And uh, sometimes they'll stay over at Mimi and Pawpaw's. And, and it's fun, even though Mimi and Pawpaw don't sleep, <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah. but we have a ball. So, but you know That's what, awesome. this is just time with them that I, they're, there just seems to be so much against our children these days and our grandchildren yeah. and grandparents can have such a major impact uh, on their little lives. I know my grandparents did and uh, boy, you know, so I didn't want to miss that chance. 
Yeah, well, as a, I've got two boys, 11 and seven, and they have good relationships oh, wow. with my parents and uh, my wife's parents. My wife's parents live in town, so they spend a good amount of time with them. Um, and so I love having those relationships with my parents and her parents to where they can help reinforce, you know, what we're teaching them. Absolutely. You, know, you mentioned specifically the world, the world is going to, the world is going to teach them what the world wants to teach them. Um, the world has its own agenda for sure. That's right. And yes. so when we're trying to counteract that and we're trying to pour in the, pour into them, the other things, it's always great to have that support system that's coming around you in those moments when um, when you're around to yeah. reinforce those those positive things that we're trying to to teach them. Absolutely. And you'll never regret. Yeah, that, you know? I love that. Uh, train them up in the way they should go. You know, yeah. But I know you also you and I have something in common, and that is uh, we are both licensed realtors. And yes, uh, we do real estate as well. So if you're in Kentucky, hey, hit me up. Um, but Ronnie, you've taken it even outside. We were chatting about this earlier. You've taken it even outside of Tennessee where you're licensed. Um, I don't really get into this part of real estate, what you're doing. So just tell the folks real quick how you can help them, even if they don't live in Tennessee. Well, what what I did, stepping back about a year, my couple of years, my mother-in-law, uh, Carol Lehman, she lived with us and she was in hospice for a couple of years. My wife was her full-time caregiver. Mm. And long story short, the home that we were in, uh, which was closer to town, downtown Nashville, um, we ended up selling because it just, it was not conducive to taking care of someone in hospice. So we sold and we did, and we did well. We moved further south. I'm actually between my brother and Guy Penrod. Penrod, uh, Michael lives five miles up the road from me. I think Penrod's five or eight miles down the road. What a trio that would be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought about it, yeah. <laughs> so so I we moved down here. But when we did, and it was it was much better for my mother-in-law and my wife because she was taking care of, of my mother-in-law, who's now with the Lord. She passed away here in our home. Um, I'm so far south now that to run clients all over Nashville and whatnot, it just got to where it wasn't conducive enough. So I focused primarily on referrals and um, what most people reach out to me through social media. You know, I had a couple in Colorado Springs, Ronnie, we want to sell our home. We need a, we need a little more room. So I was able to put them in touch with the best realtor there. Uh, I had a couple in Alberta, Canada who, had property in Costa Rica and mm -hmm. they needed they needed to sell it. Well, I was able to hook them up with the best people down there. So that's what I focused on. And the beautiful thing about that is, man, I can do that from home right here right. in my office. Yeah. So I love being home. I, I really do. And, uh, and being able to work from home, I've got all my files. I've got everything here. So uh, it really has. And it's been a blessing because I've been able to help some people. And sadly, it's life, you know, a, yeah. a loved one pass away or a divorce. Um, but I've been able to talk and meet some great, great realtors who uh, who can get the job done. Yeah, including one in Kentucky. I think I know a guy there. <laughs> Trust me, you will be the first call. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, I, I, you know, you mentioned you ain't been on the road and for two and a half years. You mentioned only doing five concerts, but that hasn't stopped you from still recording some new music. Um, and it's out there. Tell the folks what's going on with that, man. Well, I tell you what, Michael and I have, uh, no, Michael and I have been talking. Like I said, he lives five miles up the road from me. And we have gotten to where, you know, we had a lot of our catalog up on all the streaming platforms and this, that, and the other. Well, we've actually gone in and there's actually recordings we've never released. So we're going in, we're tightening those things up and we're putting those out. And uh, and not only that, but me personally, I actually, well, I recorded the project with Bill Gaither's company, Living Legacy. That's available out there. And then my wife and I, it's the first time it's ever been announced publicly, we've just finished a new record ourselves. Wow. And it's called Just the Two of Us. And Matt, it's a lot of the classics like the Carpenters, they long to be close to you, you know. Yeah. When I started having grandchildren, I started recognizing even in the secular world, 
just how songs that I don't want my grandchildren hearing mm -hmm. about what this is what love is or this is what friendship mm -hmm. is or this. So I took an active, uh, I, I, what do you say, proactive approach myself. Yeah. And I went back in, in some of the old 70s and 60s and found some of these songs that uh, that are wholesome. Yeah. You know, and Kim and I really feel strong about that. Uh, she recorded uh, What a Wonderful World. I recorded The Impossible Dream. Um, and that'll be out probably next month. So, um, so it's, uh, I, and my website's ronniebooth.com. So, okay. uh, uh, so it's just good, wholesome music. You know, I, Christ is Lord of every aspect of my life. He's asked, Lord of my relationships. He's Lord of my finances. He's Lord of what I do for recreation. Everything I do, I am to honor him by. And I just wanted to sing songs about other aspects of life. As I said, relationships, the love between a man and a woman, the way that he intended it to be. Friendship. I recorded Dan Fogelberg's leader of the band in honor to honor my father, my dad, who is 80 years old. Uh, today nice. <laughs> he turned 80 years old today yeah so we got a little party for him uh in here in a few hours but uh, i was gonna yeah. ask what that looks like today i mean what you and michael being such the great sons that you are i'm sure there's going to be a rousing party today for him right <laughs> he'll be ready for it to be over <laughs> <laughs> That's not, so yeah go ahead go ahead no, I was going to say too, and uh, we have a, Michael and I, a lot of people may not know, I'm the oldest and we have a sister, Melissa, and then Michael's the baby and uh, Melissa lives over in Atlanta, but uh, we stay in her in touch with her quite a bit too. But when the three of us get together, it can be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, um, a couple things we just mentioned there made me think of something that we were, well, I think you were a part of, yeah, 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 you were there. Um, so you mentioned Atlanta. Yes. And, and then with the, the birthday you mentioned, you know, when we're recording this, it's uh, December, what is it? 19th. 19th. Yeah. So we're less than a week from Christmas. So you and I spent so, and it made me think of this. You and I spent several years together on the, what we called the Jubilee Christmas tour. Oh yeah. Um, and probably five or six years before you guys made the exit from the tour. And then we continued to do it for a couple of years after that, just greater vision and legacy five. But um, we had some great memories. Um, we we had some times when we all were like, get away from me. I'm <laughs> done with this. I'm ready to go home, back off. But for the most part, it was, it was fun. Um, it was friendly. We had a great time. Um, one of the highlights that I remember from a lot talking with a lot of folks is you always reading the the Christmas story when you were with oh, us on the man. tour. Um, and uh, one of the other things that happened specifically in Atlanta, you know, that's what brought it to mind was we were doing um, this Jubilee Christmas two recording, I believe it was. We were filming at and we were, Studios. And in touch, it was a brand new facility. Yes. It's like they had not done anything in that facility before. It was brand new. Jubilee Christmas rolls up in there and we set a fire on the stage. Oh, Do yeah. You remember this? <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> we, and you were singing. <laughs> <laughs> so that, and that video popped up in my, uh, my social media feed recently as a memory. And that was one of those times that I didn't know it, but I could have been in, in some serious oh. danger if, uh, if it had gotten any worse. Would you like to share what happened or uh, oh, interject sure. into that story a little bit there? Well, there was a, there a lot, part of, uh, uh, there was a lot of music, but you know, when you get those three groups together, there's going to be some comedy yeah. and, you were singing White Christmas, was it? Was that the song? Yeah. So Matt's featured on I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. Hey, yeah. You had to go yeah. one up me on how you sing it, man. You just sang it smoother <laughs> oh, than I ever doing, did. Oh, I'm dreaming. <laughs> but it was he was doing a beautiful job. Well, Scott Howard, many of you guys will remember will remember Scott. 
he came up with this contraption uh, that I think if I remember, he set it up. He said, uh, our snow machine broke. So I had to, uh, I had to kind of put something together. Well, he gets this leaf blower and a, and a, a paint roller at the end with toilet paper. Yes. <laughs> and he turned this thing on and toilet paper right. is shooting all over Matt. And he's just covered in toilet paper. Well, Somebody, he was standing, uh, I think it was Scott was standing pretty close to some of the candles that were on the stage. <laughs> yeah. And the candles, uh, the paper, the toilet paper found the candles. And yeah. while, and, and it started, and it started the fire. And there you are draped in it, <laughs> in all this toilet paper. <laughs> so they all quickly, you saw about 10 guys go boom, right on yeah. that fire <laughs> trying to put it out. And we, nobody thought about it until it actually happened. So I'm, I am grateful, all jokes aside, it didn't get any worse. Right. Maybe for a moment, but. <laughs> well, well, I'm sitting there singing it. And I remember thinking, okay, like you said, there's going to be some comedy and there's going to be some people being stupid behind me during this because this is a comedy part this of the stupid. program, right? Yeah. And this is just what we do. Like yeah. we have people on stage that just be stupid and that's part of the comedy. And, and, um, so I thought to myself, okay, somebody's just ramping it up a little bit more than normal tonight because there's a lot more commotion than normal behind me. But in my mind, I'm thinking we're doing a video. I don't know what they're doing, but I just gotta, I just gotta keep singing the song, keep it going. So I finished the song out, I get done, I turn around and everybody's standing up and messing around and and moving and and and, and I, I looked at I don't remember who I looked at, but I looked at one of the guys there and I'm like, what happened? And they were like, the toilet paper caught on fire. Oh yeah. I was I, like you could that's called Southern Gospel Pyro. <laughs> <laughs> and I had just got done pulling all that toilet paper off around my head, my face, draped in it oh. from head to toe. Um oh. I, and I just walked out of all of it and I was like, I remember thinking that could have been really oh. bad if that hadn't been. And when you watch the video, a couple of the stage guys had some water bottles and they were like out there using those water bottles to try to put the, the fire out. Oh, Fortunately, yeah. the fire didn't get very big, but if it yeah. had, if y'all hadn't uh, got out there, people were stomping on it. And that's what the commotion was, was people right. back there stomping on the toilet paper, trying to put the fire. Yeah. Out. That, caught that catching on fire was not part of the skit <laughs> and no. it was never intended to be so that was totally reactionary by everybody yeah. just trying to make sure that didn't get any further you know yeah because that could have been bad <laughs> yeah well if, if it had been part of the skit i should i definitely would have had a higher life insurance policy payout <laughs> uh, or workman's yeah. comp or some kind of insurance for getting injured on the job right yeah when you work with the booth brothers legacy five and greater vision and they're together you need a higher life insurance policy. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a lot of good times during that christmas tour um and a, a lot of a lot of folks thousands of folks were coming out and seeing that program and laughing with us and yeah. um, being inspired and enjoying the music celebrating the true reason for the season and that was always a, a hot a highlight of the year uh, when we were doing those. Did you have any other memories you wanted to share from that tour that we did together? Well, honestly, Matt, truly, just the camaraderie. I mean, I that we all shared. I mean, you know, after seventeen days on the road, and that gets kind of old, and yeah. you love everybody, but you're ready to get to the house too. Yeah, for sure. But no, there were it, seeing the people, and the people, you know who have access to us, the, the the people who paid for the ticket and they're talking to us, some of those people, that's a hard time of year for them to go through because their loved one is not there or for whatever reason. Uh, so it brought a lot of joy. And it also, in, in all the joy that it brought, it also reminded everybody of the real reason for the seed. This is about Christ, you know. Yeah. So, uh, and I think it was one of the most well-rounded programs I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. When you consider all the different pressure points, if you will, the serious, when we're singing Oh Holy Night, or when we're doing a skit like that, we took it from one spectrum to the other. Yeah. And uh, we took the audience all through every one of them. So it would truly was, I, I miss those, they're wonderful me memories, 
and yeah. uh, and it would be fun, you know, to do something like that from time to time again. Just For go sure. out, no pressure, and have a ball, you know. Yeah, yeah, it would be it would be fun to get all those guys together again and just do a few. You know, I, I don't want to do a seventeen day run again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I'm spoiled now. Two and a half years at home, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, dude, any any last things you want to share with the folks before we say goodbye to them? You know what I would like to say in all seriousness is um, when when Michael and I and our dad started singing together, it, I never thought the Southern gospel world would ever accept us because when we originally started, our vision was we were, if you know the Christian singer Steve Green, mm -hmm. we were going to be more of a Steve Green vocal group. And we started out that way, but it was Eddie Crook who saw us in Greenville, South Carolina. And he said, uh, he said, boys, he said, I think, I think the audience would really take to you guys. So he and his wife were the first ones to put the money on the table. And it just opened the door for us in the Southern gospel world. And we got to not only sing with some of our heroes, Michael and I did, and certainly our father, but, and I never expected it to last as long as it did. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the beautiful thing. And it was all because the people just kept coming to the programs and kept buying the merchandise, which kept us on the road. And uh, so I just want to say, thank you. You allowed me to live my life, uh, my dream for years and honor the Lord in the process, you know, and now the beautiful thing is because we have social media, because we have streaming, because we have YouTube and all these other things, we can still stay in touch with people. Sure. And and put out fresh content, this, that, and the other. And uh, but not necessarily have to leave home. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. So it's an exciting time. Yeah, I love it. I love uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, sharing I love I love hearing you share your heart and uh and your your gratitude and your thankfulness to the folks who have enjoyed your music for so many years. And I think that's a great way to end the uh yeah. the video. Just saying thank you to y'all for your love and support of 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 Ronnie and obviously all the artists that are yeah, your favorites yeah. and maybe even some who aren't your favorites, but yet you still go out and support them uh, <laughs> because you love the music. And and most of all, the reason you love the music is because you love the message and where that message come from comes from yeah. and what it's truly all about. So we know you love the Lord and um and you love this music that honors him. So yeah, I echo Ronnie's sentiments. Thank you all so much for loving us. And uh, thank you for watching the video. And I hope you'll watch more as we go on. You can go to RonnieBooth.com. Is that what you said it was? RonnieBooth.com? Yeah, yeah. Yep. yep sure is, yeah. Go to RonnieBooth.com, get you some music, be looking for that new release. And um, yeah, come to one of his six shows he's doing <laughs> in 2024. Yeah. You may have to buy a plane ticket, but you can get one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got plenty of time to do it too. Yeah, you can book it now. So thanks y'all for watching. We'll see you next time on Fouch and Friends.